There is a word from the Lord. Yes, yes. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Amen. If you will get your Bibles out and turn to Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 27 through 34. Matthew chapter 6, starting at verse 27. And I'm coming from the New King James Version. Let me know when you get there by saying amen. 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 <clears throat> it starts out, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Uh -huh. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Mm -hmm. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe to you, O ye, may O you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek, yet, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about his own troubles. Sufficient for the day is his own trouble. Mm. Today I want to talk to you about don't worry about it. All right. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. Us as believers go through life worrying about something that is already fixed. We worry so much that we will have the audacity to rely on our own power than the power of God. Mm. And one thing that I've noticed is that non-believers mm -hmm. really don't worry as much. Hmm. Non-believers don't really worry as much. And we've got the God that can change anything at any time by the blinking of our eye. But non-believers don't worry as much. Let them get a, a note on that door and say that your rent is overdue. And if you don't pay by the 20th, mm -hmm. then we shall evict you All right. out of here. They would just snatch the, the note on the door and say, oh, well, I ain't worried about all that. I'm going to have them, and they'll get their rent when they get their rent. But as far as a believer, uh -huh. we see the same numbers like, oh, Lord, what I'm going to do now? Do. God, I've been praying. God, I've been uh, worrying about so many things. God, I've been doing, trying to do good, God. And how did this happen to me, Lord? I, 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 got, I got a job that I'm going to pay $8 an hour, Lord, and I'm only getting 30 hours a week, God. So, I got, how, 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 how you going to get me out of this? God, I don't know what to do. Any situation that the non-believer gets in, he don't worry about it. But the believers will worry about it. We're up all night about it. We're, we're praying, we're praying, and we're reading our word. While the non-believer is getting their sleep. Not worrying about not letting nothing take away from their sleep. Not worrying about nothing. Hey, I, I, they'll get their money. I know I just made $8 an hour. They, they knew I just made $8 an hour. They just knew we were just getting 30 hours a week. They knew that. They'll get their money when they get their money. Uh -huh. Things happen. All right, all right. But we're so worried, like, I don't know what I'm going to do, Lord. That we've forgotten about two years earlier mm -hmm. when God brought us out of that situation. Mm -hmm. When we're in the hospital lane there and God literally healed our body and we was okay. And everything seemed to piece together. God was doing what he was doing in his time. And, and, we, and, and we came out glorifying God, came out with a shout on our lips. Right. We forget all about that when the next problem comes. And God is looking like, why are you worrying? 
But God is all, which we don't know, that God is already there. He knows. He already knew and preordained that problem to come before even that situation. He knew, he knew and preordained that problem to come before he even knew anything. He already knew that was going to happen when the day was going to happen, the time was going to happen, right. and the place that it was going right, to happen. Right, right. So God already said, I already fixed something up for you. There, there, there is victory already set up for us. But we don't, we, we, but we don't see this or don't believe this because all we see is what we see in front of our eyes. The only thing that we are experiencing, the thing that we are experiencing. And that's the only thing that we see and we know. And I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go back now to uh, Matthew 6 and 27. We're going to look back at that again. And it says, which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? Mm -hmm. So I said, one cubit, Lord. What is that? So I went, I did my research, and I went and got a definition of what cubit means. Uh -huh. And I learned that cubit is not an exact measure. In the Bible, it literally means a cut or something cut off. Mm -hmm. So in layman terms, by you worrying about that situation, you are literally cutting off what God can do in the midst of that situation. Wow. Amen. So by worrying, you're not adding to the power of God. You're taking away. Liberty cut it off. We worry so much and we're wondering and we're wondering why I feel like God is on deaf ears. One that feel like God is not listening to us. Have you ever been there before? Mm. I've been there before. You feel like God feel like God is on deaf ears because you're worrying at that time. So you so you wondering, you trying to come up with you trying to come up with a solution, what you can do. You can. Relying on your own power and what you can do. I, I can do this and maybe that situation will be fixed. I can do that with maybe the situation be fixed. It's not on me. I can do this or I can do that. Relying on your own power. Mm -hmm. Relying on things in your own power in certain situations, in certain places. So worried about it that, that literally you are cutting off what God can do in that situation. Right, right. And God is looking and saying, well, they think they got to handle it. That's the reason why it seems like nothing is being done or, or it seems like it's taking too long for things to get done because, because God is looking at you and saying, well, they think they got to handle it. I don't have to do anything right now. And you're, and you're praying and you're praying and you're praying, but they're trying to, what you're trying to, you're trying to come up with a solution by yourself. But God is, God, God, God is saying that I already have the solution laid out for you. Trust in me. If you trust in me and you don't worry, then you'll get your sleep just like that non-believer. You'll get your sleep just like that non-believer. We, 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 we go in situations and we go into problems. We don't look at the main thing that we have that the people of the world don't have. We have a powerful God. Yes, yes, yes. That's the main thing that we don't look at. We forget all about that we got a powerful God. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. We forget all about that. Uh -huh. That we have a powerful God. Yes. Who can change anything. And we forget. We forget so easily that God mm -hmm. is in control. Yes, yes. Yeah. Isaiah 40 and 28 and 31 says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, never faints, neither faints nor is weary. Understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak. Yes. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be, and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount the wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And we know the definition of faint is they, they're, not, they're not giving up. They shall walk and not faint. They're not giving up. Because now they know that all their power, all their strength, everything that comes, it comes from God. Yes. They know that they serve a mighty God. Oh, yes. When you finally, listen to the right hand, when you finally realize that you serve a mighty God, I know that I serve a mighty God. When you finally realize that you, you're, you're, you're not no longer worrying about situations, 
You're no longer worrying about who, who chooses to walk out your life. You're no longer worrying about things that's happening suddenly. You're not worrying about the attacks of life because you know that I serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Don't you know we serve a God that His power is made perfect through our own weakness. I know we are always we're always hung up on I got to stay strong. I got to be strong. I got to be strong. Mm -hmm. I have to be strong. Yes. But the word of God says 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 and he said to me my grace is sufficient for you. Yes. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. I think the King James Version said my power is made perfect in weakness. Mm -hmm. Therefore most gladly, yes. I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So his power, his power, again, I'm coming back to this again, his power has made it perfect, even our weakness. So, so what are you saying, preacher man? It's okay to be weak when you're going through that situation and through that problem. It's okay to be weak because now you're not relying on yourself to be strong. <clears throat> you're relying and you're leaning on God yes. for you to be strong. Kind of puts me in the mind of the song, leaning on the everlasting arms of the Lord. Yeah. Leaning on the everlasting arms of the Lord is like, didn't know what that meant, but now I know what it means now. Hallelujah. See, I'm weak. I, I can't do it alone. Like we think when we go through our troubles or when we go through our problems, we forget all about. We forget all about what we read inside the Bible. We forget all what we all forget all about what we prayed about. We forget all about that. Uh huh. When those troubles come, right? God is right there. He's, that's why God is right there when you're going through your situation. You're going through your problem. God is saying, "I'm right there. All you got to do is just lean on me." Yes. I got you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you through this. I know you get tired. Because through our walk, our feet get tired. We want to we rest. Mm -hmm. God said, that's okay. Just rest upon me. I'm going to carry you through this. Yes. Watch me and try me and see it and, and, and see how I will bring you out of this. Amen. That's right. Now I'm going, to go, now going back to Matthew chapter 6, 28 and 29. I want you to look at this. And it says, so why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So Jesus saying, he said, don't even worry about your clothing. God says, I got you. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a testament of this because I remember a time that I couldn't afford clothing at all then. I was out of program at one time and they were just giving me clothes. Give me clothes. And it, and, it, and it looked like looked like I still had money. God will make you look like you got money and you don't even have it. You can have a penny in your pocket and God will make you look like a million dollars. Because that's the way that, because that's the way God works. Don't even worry about clothes. God said, okay, I, I know you live, you were, you, you, you used to sometimes use a, a certain style. I'm gonna keep you in that certain style. No matter if you got, no matter if you got it, or if you don't got it. First Peter three and uh, three, uh, chapter three, verses three and four. You can read in your leisure time, or you can read right now. It says, "Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart." with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Yes. Listen up, listen up. You will go through seasons where you can afford the brand names, the Polo, the Gucci, the Fendi, and the Prada. Mm. Then you will go through seasons in your life where you can only afford the thrift store, Walmart, right. and hand me that. All right, all right. But you know what? Uh -huh. At the same time, you will not have to worry about having clothing. Hey, because hey. God will keep you good looking. Yeah. Period. Uh -huh. He will keep you looking good. All right. 
Ain't that right? Saying God will keep you looking yes. good. Turn to your neighbor and say, God will keep you looking good. God will keep you looking good. Regardless, God will keep you looking good. Regardless, people don't even know you're going through. People don't even know what's going on. That's how good God is. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. Now I'm going to go back to Matthew 6, verses 31 and 32. It says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or, What shall we drink? Or, What shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Again, you will go through seasons where you're eating the steak and the lobster. Uh -huh. Then you will go through seasons where you'll be eating the bologna and the hot dogs. All right, sir. But don't worry about it. But God, because God says, I will make sure you eat uh -huh. and drink mm -hmm. and have nice clothes regardless. Uh -huh. And he says to worry about this is to be like the world, always trying to impress somebody. You can't focus on the same things as the world. Man. See, that's the enemy. That, that's the enemy's plot. So when you get in the situations, thank you, Holy Ghost. When you get in these situations, the enemy plot to have you worry about when certain things come short. You have you worry about okay, how, how I'm gonna do this or how, how I'm gonna keep this up or or or, or I need some new shoes. Where am I gonna get the new shoes from? And, and 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 God knows that you need these things. Yes. He knows he, he, he knows that you need food. He knows you need food. Mm -hmm. he, he knows you need food. He will bring somebody to you and say, hey, I can't. Man, look, I got, I got a nice little suit here. I can't fit it no more. I think it's your size. Mm -hmm. Or he will have somebody knock at your door and say, hey, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what it is. I thought about you. I brought some food to here. I just figured you guys had needed some food. I didn't know. God will still supply all of your needs. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. He will still supply all of your needs. You just can't worry about this. The enemy won't trick your mind once you're worrying about this. So you'll start worrying about the wrong thing like the world does. Right. The world worries about the wrong things and, 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 and takes your whole focus off. Takes your whole focus off God. That's all the enemy wants to do. Throw your focus off God. How am I going to do this now, well? I lost my job, so how am I going to get another job? And this whole city is messed up. They don't pay us nothing. And keep your whole focus. You, you, your focus then will start being, which is good still. You want to get a job, but your whole focus will not be on God. Then your whole focus won't be on God because when those situations arise, you, you, your, your focus is supposed to be now, okay, I lost that, but I know that God will give me another job. Amen. I know that things happen. God, God, God's going to... God, 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 God to touch the situation too and, 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 and do the same thing that he did before. I trust God. I can't sit up and worry. I just can't sit up here and worry. Because we got a mission on our life. Yeah. We have a call on our life. We're trying to say, you got a call on your life. You don't even know it yet. You say, well, no, I'm not like preacher, man. I ain't no preacher. I'm not supposed to be a good preacher. That might not be it. Right. Might be a teacher in a Sunday school or, uh -huh. or, 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 or just giving words to the kids. You might be a youth advisor. Or, well, who, who knows what it really is? Or, or, you, or, 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 or you're supposed to be singing in the choir and touching people's heart. Yes. God wants to use you. Amen. I'm not the God, God don't have respect to persons. I'm not the only person that he can bring up here and use. Man. One time in my life, I felt like, I, 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 one time in my life, when he first called me, I said, God, you must be crazy. <laughs> you don't call the wrong person to the pool, man. My God. I said, Lord, I don't even own a suit. Because <laughs> all I had was jeans back then. All right. <laughs> so, God said, yeah, I want, I want you to go. Now, I didn't, I ain't going to say, and say, yeah, I just immediately went because I didn't. It still took something else for me to immediately come. And then God will do exactly what he was going to do. Amen. He uses, you uses people that just, he just does amazing things. What can I say? 
Don't worry about it. Don't worry about that situation or that problem. You can't lose your focus. Don't lose your focus. Focus on God regardless. Focus on God regardless. But throw God in that thing. Okay, something happened with something happened with my family. I'm going to pray for them because I know that God, I can't do nothing about their attitude, but I can't do nothing about how they feel about me, but God can. God can. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18 says, Therefore we do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us far more exceedingly in eternal way of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Our focus should be on God. Our focus should be on God. Stop looking for that million dollars Man. with your naked eye. Uh -huh. But look for that thing with your spiritual eye. Yes. God, I know that my increase will come from you, Lord. Uh -huh. God, I know the situation, Lord, I know the situation, God, is, is going on and, and the problems are just arising, God. But I'm looking to you, God, in the name of Jesus. I'm just looking to you, God. I can't look at the things which I've seen, but the things which I've not seen because they're eternal. The things that I've seen is only is, is temporary. Things that I've seen are just only temporary. One day, I've seen, it, I, I, I've seen it so before, but one day that person will be here. Next day they can be gone. Right. Mm -hmm. You might have a my advice, you know, God, I don't want you to, to worry about what your clothes going to be like. Certain clothes you used to have, I don't have them anymore. Uh -huh. Certain things you used to have, don't worry about them no more. Don't get attached to them. Don't, don't get attached to all the, the gadget stuff that's on text and text at me. So don't, 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 don't get attached to the computers and the, the laptops and the, uh, and, and the phones and all these things because one day... They can be gone. You can't take those things with you. God said with the things that are not seen are, are eternal. Like love. Love is eternal. You can't, you can't, that thing that can't be taken away. Can't nobody take away your joy. Can't nobody take away your joy. That thing is eternal. God, your, your, your bond, your, your, your covenant with God is eternal. Just like we talked about covenants. We talk about God. Those things are eternal. No, nobody can destroy it. Nobody can say, well, that, that's gone. They can't just cut it off unless that person decides to cut that thing off. But anyway, but, but, your, but your covenant is everlasting. Hallelujah. Your covenant is everlasting with God. Thank you, Lord. Your covenant is everlasting in God. Look unto the things which are not seen. Mm. Stop looking at things which are seen. Somebody loses a mate or Loses a boyfriend or girlfriend, they feel like they lost their whole life. But they need to focus on God. You ain't lose, you lose your whole life, just a person. God will, God, God, God will bring somebody else better. Gotta look to God. Gotta look to God. It takes me back to the story of Peter walking on the water, looking at Jesus. As long as he had his head, as long as he had his eyes on Jesus, Amen. he was walking on water. Yes. He could literally walk on water. But once he took his eyes off Jesus, yep. he fell in the water. That's right. It's the same thing in life right now. You gotta keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen. Regardless if you get the eviction notice. Regardless if they tell you we gotta lay some people off my off your job. Uh -huh. Regardless if regardless when people come and get your car, uh -huh. you gotta keep your eyes fixed yes. on Jesus. Yes. Yes. Regardless of whatever the case may be, regardless if, if you're you're getting attacked from every every which way, regardless of whatever, regardless if you get tired, lean on him and keep fixing your eyes on Jesus. God, I know that I can make it out of this. My, well, my, my last sermon, piggybacking on that, that, that keep walking. But, 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 but in order for me to keep walking, I have to keep my eyes fixed on Jesus. Right, right. 
So, so no matter the darts, no matter the missiles, no matter what's being thrown at me, no matter the insults, no matter, no matter what, if I keep my eyes fixed on Jesus, I ain't worried about that person. I ain't, I'm not worried about what they say. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to put them in my prayer list. I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm worried about, I'm putting my eyes on Jesus. I'm worried about my relationship with God. Yes, You're going to worry about anything. Worry about your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to worry about anything? Worry about your relationship with God. Worry about your relationship with God. That's the most important thing that you should worry about. That's right. Most important thing you should worry about. I shouldn't be worried about if I had a dollar or a hundred dollars in my pocket. But as long as I got Jesus, uh, I'm rich. <laughs> All right. All right. Amen. Long as I got Jesus, I, I ain't worried about nothing else. Uh -huh. As long as I got Jesus, I know I know my riches are laid up in heaven. Yes, yes. As long yes. as I got Jesus, I am I'm not worried about a certain situation because it's already fixed. As soon as the hell broke loose, God was piecing everything right back together. Uh -huh. My God, my God. Long as I got Jesus, only is only thing that you should worry about. Don't worry about nothing else. Don't worry about that because God is taking care of the situation right now. I don't know who you are or what's going on in your life right now. But I want to let you know that God is handling your situation right now. God is speaking for, up for you. He is speaking up for you. He's, and he's speaking to powerful people right now for you. Whatever situation that you thought that was happening at the job or whatnot, God is piecing that thing back together again. Yes. Whatever situation you thought was going on in your home, your home chaotic, God is speaking peace on yes. that thing. He's been Jehovah Shalom right now. If, you, if, you, if you're trying to find your child, you want the child to act right, God is saying, God, God, God is doing his, doing his thing right now. He said, I'm going to be Jehovah sick and new in that child's life. I'm going to teach him righteousness. Yes. So don't worry about, don't worry about nothing. Just worry about your relationship with God. Nah. Keep, 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 keep your family members in your prayers. Keep your children in your prayers. Keep, keep, keep your friends, with your real friends, in your prayers. And your fake friends in your prayers. Amen? Because let's be honest. Because we got some. Amen? We got our associates. And we got, and we, and we got our, uh, our friends. Uh-huh. But nobody can be a friend like Jesus. Hallelujah. Man. Amen. Your focus should be on God. Yes. If you want to worry about anything, worry about your relationship with God. Uh -huh. Worry about your relationship with God. Because I, I just I'm just a big believer. If we and we will worry about our relationship with God, yeah. there are a whole lot of mess that we will not get ourselves into. Right. Yeah. If we will worry about relationships with God. Somebody said, hey man, I'm just coming such and do this and that. Like, oh, let me think about that first. Does that line up with the word of God? Does it line up with my walk with God? If it does not line up with my walk with God, I'm good, bro. I'm not going to do that. Mm. Then we ain't got to worry about that. We ain't got to worry about nothing else. I heard about a bad situation and it's still vexing my spirit because I'm still praying for the mother uh, and the family members. About a young lady. It's, 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 it's all on social media. If anybody else would know about it, they know about it. By a young lady found the freezer dead. And there's so many conspiracies that happened about this young lady and the things about it. And she thought she was surrounded around friends, but she was surrounded around people that the enemy was utilizing to want to destroy this young lady's life for, for, for some money. That's something that can be taken away, something that's be spent the next day. And it's just, and, and, and if only, if only I think about thoughts, I thought about it and said, God, if only she worried about her relationship with you, God, she would have never even went in the first place. Amen. Now her mother, now her mother is worried. Her mother got to get a, a detective to find out what really happened to her daughter. Mm. We don't want to be like that. We don't want... We don't want to get in our situations like that. The word of God says, plain and simple for the ways of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. We want that gift of God. 
We, want, we, we, don't, we don't want that wage of sin. We don't want to sit up there and fall in that thing. We want the gift of God in our lives. Mm -hmm. We have to be worried about our relationship with God. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yeah. We have to be worried about our relationship with God. I thank I think the Holy Ghost because, because of certain things you want to do, your, your flesh wants to do, but the Holy Ghost comes in and stops you. And said, does God approve of that? Thank you, God. Yes. We're going to look at the 33rd chapter of chapter 6. I mean, I'm sorry, 33rd verse of chapter 6 of Matthew. And it says, it's very, uh, it's, it, this is a verse that is uh, very popular and very in use. Constantly, he said, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh -huh. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. So God is saying, I have you covered. I have you covered. That's why you got to seek him first. All these things shall be added unto you. You need a car, I got you covered. Amen. Whatever you need, you need a roof over your head, I got you covered. Amen. Need your child back right, I got you covered. Amen. You need no bills paid, I got you covered. Hallelujah. God says, I got you covered. Yes, Lord. And my turn to your neighbor says, God got you covered. God, got you covered. Amen. God has you covered. Uh -huh. Yeah, I know we um we, uh, we, we, we buy insurance or we get insurance from our jobs and things of that nature and it has us covered for a help but, but there is no insurance like God insurance. Uh, yes, yes. Insurance that you know that you can rely on and it's yeah. free. Yeah. Amen? Hallelujah. God got you covered. Yeah. When you need healing, he's going to heal that body. When you when, when when you need a situation to be fixed, he's gonna fix that situation. Oh my God. Whatever the problem is, if you like you said, if you need food, he's gonna bring that food. If you need clothes, he's gonna bring those clothes. What if you need a roof, he's gonna bring that roof. Whatever you need, God's gonna bring that thing. He says that I have you covered. Thank you, Lord. But you have to seek me first. Yes. Yeah. It says, seek, seek God first and all these things. Seek God first and righteousness and his righteousness and all these things, all these things. shall be added unto you. Uh -huh. So many people in the world saying, well, I, I can't wait to get mine. I got to get mine. I, I can't wait till I get to heaven to get mine. I got to get mine now. And so many people in the world trying to get theirs now and trying to, and doing so many things inside the world to try to get it and try to try, try, try to get those things that they want out of life. I'm like, brother, but if you trust God and what he can do and, and know that God can do it, he'll get you the same things, but it'll be through him. And you ain't got to worry about nobody seizing nothing or taking away from you because that because, because God got you covered. Yeah. You, got, you got that through the Lord yeah. and can't nobody touch that. Amen? Amen? That's right. And look at the last verse, 34. And it's uh, very explains itself. It said, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the point. This, this is a problem. It's the point when you get you 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 worry about things, and uh, you got to tomorrow for a deadline that you have to meet, and you don't know if you'll be able to meet that deadline. So 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 you got so 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 you worry about these things so much. So you worry about tomorrow, and God said, "Don't worry about tomorrow. I got I got tomorrow covered. Uh -huh. Tomorrow gonna worry about his own things." Like, yeah, I know, I, I I know the things are going on now. Yeah, trouble is going on now. But all you gotta do is pray to me, believe, and put it in my hands, and watch that I won't change it. Watch that I won't change it tomorrow. Mm. You know, there's an old saying that you got that God is on time. He's always on time. He won't come when you need him, but he's always on time. Mm -hmm. And that's what God is saying, that I'm on time. I will be on time. Don't worry about tomorrow. Yeah, I know the deadline is coming. 
I know the deadline is coming, it's coming. And yeah, I know it's going to be tomorrow, but guess what? I'm going to be right there. And guess what? They're going to be able to meet that deadline. Yes. Don't worry about it. Yes, yes, yes. Don't worry about it. Amen. We go through so many situations. So many problems. We're just so worried about things. We just can't be worried about things. That we have to, we have to literally, we're going to have to be literally start worrying ourselves about our relationship with God. Do I meet God's deadline? Do I meet God's standard? And in your spirit, if it says no, then it's time now. God giving you that chance right then and there to get that thing right. Yes. To pray about it. To read. God, I'm going to do it now. I, I'm not going to wait till tomorrow because I know tomorrow is not promised. But I'm going to do it now, God. God, because I want to meet your standard. God, I want, I, I want to meet that standard. God, no, no, Lord, I want to be perfect, God. But, Lord, but Lord, if I'm trying to meet that standard, I know, and I know if I'm trying to meet that stamp of approval, God, I ain't got nothing to worry about, God, because I'm in your hands, God. Uh -huh. God has, literally has his hands on your life. Yes. He literally has his hands on you. God will see you through this thing. Whatever that you're going through. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. So God is saying to don't worry about it. Don't let the enemy punk you and have you up all night losing sleep. Don't let the enemy punk you like that. Don't let the enemy have, have, have you losing sleep, you know. And when you lose sleep, you know, some of us get cranky. And then you get cranky and you start saying things that's, that's not of God. And you start acting with, acting like ways that's not of God. And, and, you, and, and then, you, then, then you're taking out the situation with other people. Then, and then you make the situations tougher for you. Because that's the plot of the enemy. To make things tougher for you. For you to rely on your own power and say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Sweet. That's a sweet, sweet words to the enemy's ear. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know what you're going to do. And you say, preach man, what should I do? I'm going to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what you should do. You should trust in the Lord. And you should worry about your relationship with God. Because tomorrow is not promised. And we can't just worry. We just can't get caught up in the worries of life or in the worries of the world. Because we're being just like the world. Worrying about those worries. So for us to stay set apart, we have to keep our eyes on God. And we have to worry about our relationship. With God. Amen. The doors of the church are open. Hallelujah. Yes. If you feel like that you've been worrying too much and you just want prayer, please come to the altar. Children, if you're not saved and you're saying today, I want today to be my day. Yes. The, all, the, the church is open. Uh, the doors of the church are open. Uh, you are welcome to come to the altar. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Relationship with Jesus is the best thing I know I've ever done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah.